Hi, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. Welcome to the live chat. You can give your thoughts as we go along, share your opinions and reactions. In today's video, I'm going to be revealing to you the location of Jim Brenner's trailer, his burnt out one in Montello. Now, to some people, they may already be aware of where it's situated, but for others, people might not know. So this video will help explain where it is specifically, okay? In addition, I didn't know myself. I was asking for coordinates here and there, politely, but no one really responded up until just recent times. So credit to the individual that gave them out, okay, in one of the previous live chat videos, okay? And there was that feature talked about going back in time, the time travel one, where you can look back through the years of the location that was going to be used in today's video but I did you know just test it earlier on and it's very limited it goes from 2019 the last known image back to 2013 and that's not practical whatsoever so I'm going to save that for another messy video okay and tie it all in with Dylan's farm as well but I did find something even more important Okay, and that is Jim Brenner's vehicle from the looks of it. So let's get into Google Earth and break it down. Okay, so here we are on Google Earth. On the left hand side, you have Montello, Nevada, and that's where the markers are situated. And as you can see, when you zoom in a bit more, very close to the border, if not bordering onto it and near to the mountains as well, as you saw in my previous video I did looking at that area on both sides unaware of the location at the time but now I know so maybe we can actually tie things together as well as previous theories as well as my previous Montello map analysis of all the other locations and dodgy buildings okay let's see if we can try and all mash it up together as I said share your thoughts as we go along what do you think of the ideas and how it looks visually and so on okay so where do you want to start first let's start off with the trailer now this is the thing if for whatever reason okay it's incorrect the coordinates or this location isn't specific or something feel free to correct in the comment section or the chat the reason why i say that with some form of lack of certainty is because the way the case has gone with the information it it switches and changes so you can never be too certain okay but that aside, let's just zoom in. Bear in mind, this is 2019, so that's why the trailer isn't burnt down, okay? Now, another quick reminder, when I did do the time travel thing on the other app, or whatever you call it, it did go to 2020 when I zoomed out, but it didn't show the trailer burnt down, and it was within the time frame when they said two years ago, okay? Just to for, let you know. So we're currently facing north, and as you can see, you can see the white thing emerge, and that is his trailer. Now, some people could be saying, how do you know this, or why do you know it? Well, I didn't know it was passed on to me. And, you know, with Lance and Ty, or Lance and Kimber, exploring the trailer in person, getting the coordinates down, and then handing them on to, like, maybe another YouTuber, another investigator, and then then passing it on to a viewer, etc. That's how it came about, the location, okay? I just want to provide to you an aerial point of view to get a different angle and perspective on how it looks. And most importantly, how it looks before it burnt down, okay? That's the important part. We've seen what it looks like afterwards, but we've not seen the before. But now we can see. Now, you see a few white things around. To you, chat, what do you think of this area? Does it look okay? I mean, it's not burnt down, but does anything stand out to you? And I'm going to hover over this area for a bit, okay, as I'm talking along. So if you do see anything of interest, feel free to point it out. To me, in my opinion, there's a few white things scattered about, spread out, just like how it was when uh, Lance went. I don't know what they are. Rocks, stones, 
target practice things because there was a square-ish target practice bag used for shooting at previously, what we saw in Lance's video. If we zoom in, can you see those little white dots? Scattered about, these tiny little white dots or squares. There's a bigger one there, as you can see. Um, is there any more? There's another one there. That might not be of any importance, but kind of interesting. Now, I can't see any stick figures or any people present here. You know. Um, there seems to be a... Maybe is that rubbish outside? Piles of rubbish, scrap by the side. Could be. Trailer itself looks, you know, like how all the other trailers do. White, same length. Not much else to it. So, yeah, interesting. Look at it from this side. Unfortunately, there's no proper 3D mode, so it's not like I can get down to ground level. As for street view, I don't think that's available either. The only street view is on the main road highway, literally in Montello, the town. You remember that older video I did where it was very limited, so... Unfortunately, can't do that. Okay. So the actual area around, if I just zoom out, okay. Pretty bare. Now, people would have seen it themselves, okay. When they're watching uh, Lance's video. And um, I don't know if I can show you um, a before and after, maybe. I don't know. I mean, the way it looked in their video, it was kind of like that. You had the trailer there on the ground when uh, Lance was there and uh, you had the mountains in the distance so maybe I've angled it correctly and also as you can see there's a few other little markers ahead which we will get to very shortly. Right so before we get on to the other markers I just want to get on to like the main dirt road which is over this way you see that orangey line goes up that way just want to start here for a second. You might be wondering why. Well, let me rotate the screen this way. So we are now facing west. So let's say you are coming this way, going west, and you wanted to go to Jim Brenner's property. Okay. You're driving down here. You can see the road. In the distance, you've got Box Canyon and Montello right in that direction west. But you're Jim Brenner driving down this road. Let's say. Or you could be coming from Box Canyon, more than likely, if he's visited Montello. But you get you get what I'm saying. Comes down here. There's a few paths which drop to the left, but you ignore them. And once you come here, you turn around. And then his trailer's just there. Can you see? Off-road, but there is kind of a pathway. Can you see those track marks? Now, I made sure that the orange line ran in parallel by the side of the track marks, so it doesn't overlap. I did that so you can actually see yourself the track marks leading to Jim's property, okay? And those track marks are going to reveal something quite important, okay? So stick with me. So which angle should we do? Let's do it like that. Driving along, you see the thin white lines... And then look, can you see it? That lightly coloured, dusty looking path as it bends in and out by the side of that yellow, orangey line. You can see a slight clearing in the ground. I don't know if these are the same track marks what Lance came across. Maybe that was in a different direction, correct me if I'm wrong. Drops down slightly, goes back up. You can see it bends back round here, goes up this way, left, you can see him faintly, get ready, it drops down, bit steep, and look what's there, what appears to be Jim Brenner's truck, his vehicle. This was 2019, he may have changed his vehicles in between, 
but you know from the looks of it this appears to be his and depending what money is like you know people do stick with the same vehicle the same car for quite a few years so this could still be around to this day now when lance and kimber investigated this land that vehicle wasn't there it makes sense with jim moving on moving from montello to lucin and squatting there maybe his vehicle was in that uh, on the other side of the border okay but just looking at it how 2019 on that day when google earth google decided to do some flyover and do aerial imaging it just so happened on that day that year that time to capture jim's potential vehicle you know it it's kind of difficult that because you know you can't predict when someone's gonna appear or when they're gonna disappear on that day out of all the years all the months all the days and hours in a day and they managed to pick and capture the vehicle. That's quite unique in my eyes, at least. Let me know your thoughts on the vehicle. Have you seen this vehicle before within the area or near Lucin? Is this officially Jim's vehicle or former vehicle? Is it at the scrapyard now or still in use? Maybe it's been passed on. I'm not an expert on that, so I wouldn't know. But from the looks of it, do you call it a pickup truck? Or is a pickup truck when it tows cars? Huh. Well, it appears to be a truck with an open, um, do you call it trailer? I don't know the terms for it all. Basically, at the back, it's like an open boot where you can just dump stuff in. Like with a Ford, like with Dylan's vehicle, the Ford F-150 Raptor, how that's built and constructed, similar to this. The type of vehicle makes sense because it's off-road. You see the farmers use it, and Jim seems to use it. Now, these track marks go a bit further up and then come to a dead halt, which I assume he just stops, parks, gets out, and walks to his trailer, which isn't too far away. It's there. It makes sense leaving the vehicle away a bit of, a bit of a distance because when you look here, there's a bit of vegetation. There's not much of a proper pathway. Although, actually, very faintly, it looks like it does continue very faintly. You probably can't see it yourself, but I can see it. It does continue slightly, and it slightly bends to the right and comes up this way and then stops. The reason why that's important, okay, if the track marks ended right there where the vehicle is you could say well dead end the car's not moving anymore it's probably parked up do you know like how you'd see a car in the parking lot in the slot in the bay you just you just assume oh they're out of the car they're elsewhere shopping that's it case closed but if you saw the car half in half out like it was reversing in or reversing out you'd say there's activity somebody's in the vehicle at this moment in time when you look at it this way and interpret it if the track marks continue on like how i said and bend round further up here it means there's a chance that this vehicle is still moving so just imagine just imagine if you were flying that plane or the helicopter whatever's used doing the imaging aerial view imaging and you just so happen indirectly without knowing at the time back then in 2019 to capture a future suspect a future killer tied with the dylan rounds case and you caught his vehicle on camera on that date that year that month it's kind of weird isn't it when certain things are captured and frozen in time and then it reveals why well, it doesn't really reveal but sometimes it can foreshadow what's to come so yeah that is kind of spooky this is what you'd see in one of those uh, top 10 scary things caught on camera or spooky things caught on camera moments before disaster you know what i'm saying that sort of stuff so uh yeah 
in terms of this like bit where it dips down, is this a wash? A river? Because there seems to be some kind of like pathway or small clearing like a river, how it meanders, bends in and out. Is that a small wash? A small river dried up? I mean, it dips down, so um, could it flood? It could. Would that mean access is restricted, limited, meaning you're not able to get back to your property? Because it does dip down a fair bit, and it runs on all the way down here as it goes in and out, up to Six Shooter Canyon. So let me know your thoughts on that. Is this a small dried up river or a wash or the same thing? Hmm, interesting. And it, it looks like it goes off to the left as well. So it's like Jim is on like a little island. Now I know when you're actually there in person it probably isn't, but from aerial point of view, the depth of it, that does seem to be the case. Okay. Now, what do we move on to next? Well, what about the activity of Jim? So, he's in this area. Montello is over that way, as you can see. What I'm going to do is just a quick distance check from Jim Brenner's trailer to Montello. I could do it on the road if you want me to, if you want it a little bit more accurate. It will take a bit of time and then I'll have to talk in the background like elevator music so it's not an awkward silence, okay? But also you can chat amongst yourselves as I'm doing it, okay? Do that and then we need to move on to a key marker which actually ties back to a previous video I did of a very dodgy area. Dodgy, okay? Dodgy time is coming. So, zoom out a bit. Try and simulate if Jim was going on a journey. First, miles if it works. It doesn't have to be super accurate, but I can just tie it with the road like that. And although the pathway goes in the other direction, that will explain shortly with the other key points, okay? Can I flip the image? Right, so... Got to try and think how I do this. Get off measurements. I don't care if it works better in 2D. I'll do it in my way. 2D, 3D, 1D. Who cares? Is there anything interesting along the way? Probably not. Let's do it very rough. Sometimes I like it rough because it's uh, more time efficient. There we go. Also, I don't know, because I'm using my fingers, obviously, uh, to rotate and move around. I don't know if you hear the slight tapping on the screen, but that's probably because the microphone's close to it. So apologies about that. But you could say it's ASMR. ASMR. side of the road because there's a railway track right there. It appears there needs to be a crossing to be able to get over it and I can't seem to find that. So never mind, I will find a way myself like that. There we go, no one ever needs to know. Keep quiet. Shh. So, nine miles, roughly. Could be a bit more if you go in a different direction. Could be a bit less if you find a shortcut. But Montello here, as we've seen it before, we got the bar, bar and grill, saddle saw bar, Church of Jesus Christ, Montello, the school, as we've seen it before, Hoppy Creek. And over that way, Jim Brenner's trailer. Bit of distance, nine miles. I mean, it's not extreme, obviously, but a bit of a distance away. Um, you could say, why was Jim not... Yeah, why was Jim directly put there? Why not further north, further east? Why there exactly? Well, maybe Ed Harshberger decided to do that. I mean, this is the thing. Whilst Ed Harshberger is the one that said to uh, Jim that you need to move and go elsewhere. Who made the decision to, 
you know, be situated where Jim is in uh, before he moved to uh, lose him? Was it Jim himself or was it like, what do you call it, like a process where Jim was once living in Montello, the town, bad things happened, he moved on, went to where the trailer's situated, as you see on the screen, he visited Montello here and there, caused more trouble, Ed had enough of it, thought he was a danger to the whole place and said, right, you need to completely leave the area. Maybe it's that. Leave your thoughts down below. Did Jim make the decision to live in that part of the land or was he forced to or asked? Okay. So, yeah. Back up this way. There we go. Look, this is a bit better, isn't it? You're on ground level. I could get rid of that banner at the bottom, but then the whole distance thing and yellow line disappears and then I'm, I'm a lost boy. I don't want that. So yeah, you just imagine your Jim, Jim Brenner, driving back down a dark, down a long dirt road. Just imagine what it's like at night time. Dark, you can't see where you're going, or you're limited to what you can see. You see the looming dark, big shadows and silhouettes of the mountains in the distance, overlooking the land. It does make you think, if you were on some of the mountain tops hiking, you would be able to see Jim's trailer from there, right? With Jim's trailer being close to the mountainous area, which I covered in the last video, maybe some activity took place at a point in time. Not to say that happened all with Dylan, but previous ongoing things. I'll just carry on going. And as I said in the chat, leave your thoughts to what you think in terms of the location, his vehicle being caught on camera, which is quite interesting, considering, at least for me, I've not seen his vehicle before. Have any of you? We've heard about Dylan's, his grain truck and his Ford F-150 Burgundy vehicle, which was locked up, power washed and a seat adjusted and in all wheel drive. There's been that theory all that time of, oh, maybe Dylan got in the vehicle, drove here, drove there. Oh, maybe the suspect broke into Dylan's vehicle and went here, went there. Maybe the suspect took Dylan with him in the vehicle and went there. But, you know, there's not been as much talk about what if the suspect or a suspect used their own vehicle. And from the looks of the investigation so far, no other vehicles have been retrieved or analysed, from the looks of it at least. We're getting closer. I assume this might be the road what Lance and Kimber went up. Now, I don't know from what direction, okay? This direction, this area, you remember Lance's video before it appeared on the news channel where it showed the convoy of the police cars, the LE, uh, law enforcement, were they going down this dirt road from a certain direction, angle, as we were driving by to Jim Brenner's trailer? Because they did say, you know, that's where it was located. So, okay. Just carry on. Zoom out a little bit. Okay. Back to the trailer here. There we go. So nine miles to get from Montello to Jim's trailer, which is here. Okay. So that marks that one off. Right. So let's move on to the next key location. A bit of a spooky one, a bit abandoned, a bit rough looking. I know some people might be interested in that, so I'll share that with you now. For some, you might have already seen it, but for others, maybe not. So let's go back down this little makeshift dirt road, back onto the main one here. And what we're going to do, we're going to head east. Okay, so we're going east now. And let's just tie this in with a bit of a story narration, okay? Just so it sets the scene. So maybe Jim at some point, whether it's directly to do with Dylan at the time, if people wanted to put that idea across that, when Dylan went missing, he was in Montello or taken there by Jim or somebody else, maybe an associate. Some activity may have happened at the trailer. Just rotate that around. Maybe. I don't know. 
if people have visited since. We saw the track marks after Lance's video, when Lance went back with his update, noticed track marks, a breaker bar, prodding in the ground. Someone was there for a reason. We don't know who it is though, and they've not revealed themselves. And if they haven't revealed themselves, then it must be dodgy, right? Because you, let me just talk off quickly, okay? You look at the Kenny Veach case, the environment, you're not allowed to take things. You're not allowed to move stuff. If you see a rock, you got to leave it as it is. You see like a rock on a cave or a potential cave, you can't move it. You're not allowed to. You're not allowed to use drones. You're not allowed to take historical items from the place or even, even a tin copper can. You can't even take that away. The laws are very strict. Obviously, some people won't give a fuck and do whatever they want. But in terms of the laws, very strict. So, if anyone was in the area and did move a rock to check the cave out or check a potential looking cave or the mine shaft, then they're not going to record themselves on camera because they would incriminate themselves, right? In this case, you know, you can put the argument across that whoever was here didn't record themselves because they knew it was under investigation, so they didn't want to incriminate themselves recording. So that would make sense. You know, even if, they, like, if they're just curious and they just want to have a look for themselves to see. But if they know it's going to be investigated shortly, then why do they need to go themselves why do they need to get involved if they know someone official is coming in? As said, before we knew of the disastrous outcome, okay? Uh, as well, if you've viewed the video on YouTube, isn't that enough to get an understanding of what it looks like, the area? I know people will always say, oh my God, I want to go myself. I want to explore it. I want to get the whole experience, man. It, you know, it's only limited when we're on the inner web. In cyberspace, it's not good. We need to feel it, you know? We need to be there in the moment, in the time. And it's like, yeah, maybe for other stuff. But this is a little bit more serious, okay? Don't want to be tampering with evidence and messing things up. I know some people might have already done that. And some have kind of recorded it themselves, arguably. But it does make you think, what's going on here? Who's responsible? Does this tie anything to do with the activity of Dylan Rounds? Or was this back in 2019, the whole, not the track marks with Lance, that's recent, but I'm just talking about the general idea of people visiting this area. Is it well known or not? And so on. Okay. Now, one little brief point I might as well mention is with the trailer itself, okay, when it blew up, it would have created a bang, an explosion, right? And this is where, apologies, I wanted to share with you two other locations. We'll get to that shortly, okay? But this ties in with something else. And Salty Pancakes made the point, okay? So just uh, hear me out. If there was an explosion, which there appears to be, even just the fire, the smoke of it, whether it be, you know, the ground itself, bits of vegetation nearby setting a light, the trailer itself, there's going to be a cloud of smoke could be dark and black depending on what objects are around you're gonna see it in the distance right if it's vast and open there's no obstructions no towers no massive trees it's all open you will see it in the distance even if it's within nine mile radius to Montello you'll notice it won't you as for the sound I don't know about the sound but there are locations which I will share with you right now which are nearer, and you think, with all that happening, like, how did people react? Did people see it, hear it, or was it like, oh, never mind? Because surely people would, people would know about it, have witnessed it in some way, just because of the openness and the sound from an explosion, you can hear that, and it can travel, okay? Zoom out. And there's one on each side. Can you see that blue marker over there? Farm. I call it a farm from the looks of it. Back here, another farm. 
So let's just look at this one first of all. Now, I probably covered this one in my Montello map analysis. You get an idea of the area. It looks relatively normal. A few trailers, um, small house or building, as you can see there. Car parked up. Don't know what that is. A few different roads and pathways. And that looks like an RV. That looks like for horses or some kind of uh, farm life animals. So a place like this, which could have a couple of people working on living, staying at. And let's say you're, I don't know when it would have happened, what time of the day it would have happened, late at night or during the daytime. Regardless, people might have been around working or sleeping. And let's just say you're here on the ground level or so, and you're looking in that distance. And although it's a bit of a blind spot, you can't see the trailer from here. You can't because of the, the mounds and the way the elevation goes up and down. You can't see the trailer, but you should definitely be able to see the smoke as it goes up in the air. Now, maybe it's more prominent. It shows more at a certain time of the day. But even I, when I've looked through the window and I've seen flames, smoke in the distance, you know, one time way back in the past, not way back, but in the past, uh, coming back from somewhere in the passenger side, and I'm looking through the window, the car, and going through, I don't know, is it some kind of valley or something, higher up near the mountains, but coming down a, a road, and way, way in the distance, I could see a fire. I could see smoke and it wasn't a big fire, but I could see it and that was in the distance. So the same should apply here. The question is though, are the people bothered? The the residents, the locals are the like, oh well, it's probably just a farmer burning something. No worries, no issues. But if you heard the sound, then surely you would have been concerned. You might be thinking, oh damn, is that our friends? Is that one of our businesses? Is that... Uh, one of the local farmers, are they in trouble? Do we need to help them? Should we go and investigate? You know, did they know about it? Did they do anything? That's the question. Just just a little worth pointing out. So yeah, kind of near to the mountains. A little bit further away. There you go, you can see his trailer. But you can't really make it out because when you're on ground level, you won't be able to see it. Let's just take another look. Actually, let's just check the distance, okay? Literally, let's just do raw distance. Get the fuck off my screen. I hate those notifications. Miles. There. About 1.60. 1.60 miles. Hardly anything at all. So you would definitely have heard the sound of the explosion. Okay? Let's just take a look at the farm over here. Bit more established, more greenery near East Canyon. Nearer to the mountains, Bald Eagle Mountain, you can see the actual road as it drives up. Let me just check something very quickly, okay? I don't know if it ties in with something. No, it doesn't. Must have been another spot from the past, what I looked at, oh man. Okay, so you see the fields. You see some of the fences, gates, trailers, virtually looks the same in terms of the vehicles. Maybe the odd RV and so on. Kind of the same. Flip the image. Ground level, you can't see the trailer again because of a blind spot, the way the ground is. But same could have happened, like what I said about the other farm in terms of the distance. Let's just check it quickly. No harm in doing it. Get lost. There we go. There. To. There. Round up. 1.50 miles. Considerably less. So. That says a lot. Okay. So they should have heard something. The question is. Did they respond? Now. That's important that. Okay. And the reason why I say that is because. Let's say they 
did know or did act and they got to the location, are they like, oh, it's just Jim's trailer, no need to worry, let's head back? Or did they get there? Did they witness anything? That's the question. If they did hear, did see, and went there to have a look to check if everyone was okay, did they see anyone present at the time? Did they see anyone driving away quickly? Whether it be Jim himself or somebody targeting him. Was it an assassination plot? I know this talks about Jim being the one responsible, being clumsy, leaving the stove on as well as the gas canisters, and it ignited that way, but Jim wasn't present at the time. But it does make you think, was anyone else present there at the time? Wasn't sure if anyone was inside the trailer, but shot at it anyway, in hopes it might take Jim out. Was there a hit out on Jim at the time? That's, you know, you never know. And if anyone did get there to check the fire to see if anyone was hurt, did anyone witness anyone suspicious within the area? Because that could reveal something, you never know. So, uh, yeah, definitely worth taking all that in mind. And as well, um, I think it's kind of an important point. I'll, I'll have to try and ask um, Lance. I think I will ask Lance about the crutch. You remember that crutch at Jim's property? People were saying it's too high for him to use the length of it. So who else was it? Was that crutch from a person who visited the trailer in the past for whatever reason? Were they the ones responsible for shooting, blowing the trailer up? It's not been answered that. So I have to reach out to someone about that because, you know, it's a bit weird. Let me know your thoughts in the chat. So now let's move on to that dodgy location and tie it in with a potential story. Let's say Jim's within this area. You know, he's familiar with the place. He lived there at a point in time for so many years. So he'd probably know the different roads, routes, shortcuts and possible buildings nearby for storing stuff, especially if they're not in use. The question is, do any exist nearby? Well, we'll find out. So, Jim in his vehicle, as you can see, driving back up this makeshift dirt road, getting onto the main dirt road, but then heading east this way, approaching the Utah border, okay? Comes up this way, approaching the mountains as well. Makes you think, did he ever go sightseeing when he was younger up there? Is he familiar or did he not bother? Because that could explain other things. Winding road. And then once up here, you got a few different pathways which branch off. The one on the left goes towards the mountains, and there is a road that goes up that way. To the left slightly, a mine, interesting. But then to the right is the abandoned barn. Now, for some people, you may remember this location in a previous video I did of Montello. As we approach this barn and branch off, you got a couple of trees in clusters scattered about. Kind of interesting. Could anything be buried there? I don't know. Has the ground been disturbed? Has it been investigated? That's the question. But near to those trees is an abandoned barn. With a fence around it by the side. Now you could say, well, when was this last used? Well, as I said, when going back in time using the time traveling feature on Google Earth Pro, it looked like this back in 2013. It looked like this back in 2000 or so. And it virtually looks the exact same to how it does now to how it did back then. So basically, there's been no change and it's been abandoned for so long. If it's been abandoned for so long, 
Clearly, it's not of importance. It's not used by anyone. Well, no one doing normal stuff. If Jim was within this area, living, which he was, could he have visited this place? Maybe just to store stolen items? Guns, maybe? Has anyone been to this location since? If it's that quiet... And if Jim knows about it, maybe he used it for storage. And then fast forward to the disappearance of Dylan Rounds. Could he have returned back to this spot, a place he knows well? A place he knows where people don't visit that often. Could he have held Dylan captive in this barn? That's the question. It looks abandoned, it looks spooky. It looks like the sort of place where dodgy stuff could happen. You see, there is a bit of a track marks, isn't there? So something has been down here. As for the surrounding area, bits of vegetation. I don't know if that's bits of equipment. Can't quite make it out, it's not exactly clear. Is it tied with any farms within the area? Well, if we just zoom out, you got the farm over there, bit of a distance, so I don't know if that's tied with that farm. And then you got the farm over that way, if it shows. But still, a bit far away. The mine over there, whether it's associated with the mine, I don't know. But from the looks of it, it looks farming related, as if pigs, you know, pig farm or for horses, just to, you know... I don't know, just stick in that field, I guess. But it doesn't look like it's been in use. And it hasn't been in use for a very long time. So Jim could have used it instead. So has this been explored or not? If not, maybe it's worth letting Lance know. I'll try and reach out to Lance myself, okay? And then I can respond back to you if he says he has explored it. Or, you know what? If Lance is watching right now, or Ty, feel free to leave a comment in the chat or in the comment section and say whether you know about this area, whether you've explored it, been inside it, the lot. Okay? That'd be appreciated. So, Jim's trailer. Oops, get off. Do you want to check the distance quickly? Just get an idea. Come on. <sighs> and we just do it all the way back to his trailer, just get an idea. I mean, it's not that much distance anyway, driving, but, you know, he could be lazy, most likely. Is it not doing it in miles yet? Ah, oh, this is pissing me off. Why is it doing that? Oh well. Just a rough one, that'll do. So once again, it's like round it up about like one point five one point fifty miles, kind of the same distance to how it was at that other farm in the distance, so all within um within range, if you want to call it that. So Jim could have easily drove up there to that abandoned farm to store firearms. More than likely, maybe Dylan, if he returned back to Montella. That's just a question. I mean, I think it was the Heavy D interview, okay? In the Heavy D interview, Candy's, uh, Dylan's mother, ended up saying that Jim is currently in his trailer over that way on Dylan's land. He's grumpy, doesn't talk much. He's in there right now. So you've got to look at it this way. Scene of the crime, within the area, Dylan missing. And where's Jim? Did he flee? No. Did he run away? No. Still living in the same area and spot. Does that make him more suspicious or less? Leave your thoughts in the chat, okay? Worth taking into mind. Now, if it wasn't the barn where Jim took Dylan, 
coordinates of this abandoned barn, bottom right corner of the screen, if you want to take notes, okay? So if Jim visited here in the past, he might have used it again because, you know, it's one of those things where sometimes criminals might go back to a childhood place where they grew up, where they know fairly well, they know the ins, the outs, the access points, exit points, hidden places, secret locations, like what you might see in the movies, in the films, where they say, hey, let me take you, take you back to my old hiding place when I was a child. This is where I used to hang out and hide when there was arguments going on with other people, you know, that sort of thing. So maybe Jim uh, made use of this. I keep getting mixed up when I say Jim because I keep thinking of all the other Jims. There's too many Jims in this mystery case. Jim, uh, Jim Taylor, Jim Terry, Jim, um, Jim, oh fuck, lots of Jims, but you know what I'm saying. Now, if the abandoned barn wasn't used, Jim could have carried on going east. What's up this way? So, once again, it's another road, and I did cover this in my previous video, so I won't spend too long on it. If you want to check the full clip out, Make sure to click on my last video, okay? Should be a link um, in the comment section description. Let's just take a brief look at this mine. Some of you have already seen it, okay? Now, I did use the time traveling thing here, and it basically looked the same. Aside from poor image quality, not much changed within the area, all right? So, I don't know if it's still in use. Leave your comments in the chat. Do you, any of you know? Is this mine, mine shaft, still in use to this day? Or is it no longer used? Um, one of those things, and I'm just saying if, because I'm not sure. If it's not in use anymore and it's abandoned, then, you know, it's a place where Jim Brenner could have visited at a point in time, preferably during Dylan's disappearance, driving him into Montello, getting there, and then dumping him in this spot, in the mine shaft, in a hole, buried underneath something. I mean, if the ground, the land has already been disturbed here, if there's mounds and piles of dirt and all kinds of material, then it makes the job easier for him, doesn't it? So, worth taking that in mind. As said, I previously covered this in my past video. It is on the side of the mountain, so it ties in with the mountain theory. A lot of different access points and roads and pathways, how it zigzags, as you can see here. So the question is, how in use is it? If it's still being used to this date, then it basically debunks it because obviously people would see him trespassing on the land, Jim. To see him trying to bury something, and even like if they're working in the area, they might dig Dylan up quickly, so that would rule that out. But I don't know, so anyway, let's just move on. If he wasn't to go to the mine nor the abandoned barn, he could have still gone east instead of turning left to the mine, gone up this way because look, it's another road, it's in a secluded, quiet spot, it goes to the mountain area. And you can see like a proper pathway in a road. So just imagine you, Jim. I mean, just imagine driving up here at night. You probably wouldn't be. But for whatever reason, let's say you were. You just see how narrow it looks. You're being overlooked. Um, surrounded with all these mountainous areas. That are towering over you. Must be kind of spooky, that. Whilst we're here... Any mountains, rocks, anything dodgy that stands out? Probably not. It looks too much on a, a slope to really be climbing up there. So that would rule that out. Discoloration of the ground there. And that's on the side, which is interesting. So I don't know if that's been digged at or not. You see how it bends in and out. Discoloration there. It does branch off to the left slightly, but 
it goes up and over. Can you see? Up and over, and then it's right on the tip. Now, what would you be doing on the tip? Playing around, uh, getting a nice view, or attending somewhere. Wow, look at that. Right, where does it go from there? I don't know. Is it a dead end? Is it a viewpoint? Or do you just carry on going down here? No, you can't because it looks too impractical. But some vehicle would have been used at some point to get up there. Because you can see the, the marks of a track. So, interesting. I don't think Jim would have drove up that way. I think he would have been down here in the canyon, if you call it that. And then you either go left, up this way. Oops. What the hell? Could get lost. Stop messing me around. Left or right? We'll go right, okay? And you can see elevation, but fairly steady, on a road, doable as well. Let me just say something quickly. Not an expert with cars, but would you need all wheel drive to be driving in this area if it's steep? Do you need all wheel drive to have that power to get up there? Because if you do, we know Dylan's vehicle, his all wheel drive wasn't working. So if that's the case, then it wouldn't have been used or it wouldn't have been practical in this area, right? So they wouldn't have got that far. Maybe they used another vehicle. Maybe Jim, an associate, used their own vehicle to get to the location, to get to a spot which requires all-wheel drive, let's say. Leave your thoughts in the chat. Eventually, getting up here... What's on the left here? Whoa. Whoa, it's very sensitive to screen. You see how it climbs. Jim Brenner's trailer all the way down there. You'll probably be able to see it as well with binoculars. And once you're up here, what do you do? Well, I guess you can drive around. But that seems a bit on a slope. But what are you really doing up here? What's the actual purpose? If you're a hiker, explorer, sightseer, yeah, that's why you'd be up here. But someone like Jim, I don't think he gives a shit about views and stuff. He must be doing it to, well, he could be doing it to hide someone. Now, as you saw in my last video, I extensively looked at the mountainous area and I couldn't really find, you know, any proper caves or proper holes. So you'd be limited to what you can do. Bald Eagle Mountain there. Although you've got all these, you know, roads and paths, there was no actual images of Bald Eagle Mountain. Now there was of the pilot one, but then again, they were taken of it whilst people were on ground level in Lucin on the roads. So, a mm, bit of a cop-out, but yeah. But let's just follow these lines, these roads, pathways. And we come back down here, okay, as I said, let's link back to the road. Because from the looks of it, going right, as I said, goes over that way to pilot one. And it's two too up and down, not practical vehicle wise. So, what about going left? Either up this pathway or going up here and then turning left. Well, what's over here? Bald Eagle, Bald Eagle Mountain. And on the side of this mountainous area, you got that big crater. You remember that one from the last video? Could Jim have visited here? dug something, hidden something, or even Chase Venstra for whatever reason, assisted. Could Dylan be buried here somewhere? If this area has already been dug up and used, all the materials and everything sourced out from it and it's no longer in use, then maybe Jim went here with Chase or alone and covered Dylan up with the dirt, remaining dirt, the rocks, the stones, I don't know. It's good dumping ground, I guess. If it's not in use, that's the fact. If it's not in use, then something could happen. 
Okay. So, as you can see, you can get back down that way, which goes back to that farm. So it kind of all ties in together all the different routes. Other pathways. Do you have any proper pathways which go up to the mountainous area? On the side, then it reaches a dead end here, which is weird. Why would someone walk down here or drive here and then stop there? What is that patch? I don't know. Hmm. It's very steep anyway. Lucent Airport was over that way, as well as Dylan's Land. You can overlook it slightly. Now just imagine you're on this mountain top. You got the distance, you got the view, it's open, it's vast. You've got your binoculars or a telescope, and you were like looking at Dylan's farmland, his grain shed. Maybe his place of living, if it's not too far away in the distance. Would you be able to see anything right now? Like, I know Ty and Lance um, were at one of the fences, the outer skirts of Dylan's farmland. And you could see the buildings roughly in the distance, the shed. But it wasn't zoomed in because they didn't have a, a long distance camera with the lens, the zoom didn't have binoculars or telescopes. So if you were on this land here, maybe it's too far away, but would you get a good view? Would you be able to see what's going on? You know, when the police were there investigating, there was uh, some report by one individual on Twitter saying that Dylan's grain shed or the land nearby was being dug up and investigated, actually dug up. I don't know if that's exactly true or not, but that's what I saw. So if you had the binoculars and you're just on this peak, this mountain top, overlooking the distance and just watching everything so still, and yet there is some activity going on. Or even you go back in time when Dylan was on the land operating, lone individual, and let's say you're on Bold Eagle Mountain, look at that distance you've got, well, not when the camera angle decides to drop down, bastard, there's the corner, so you're on this peak. See Lucent Airport in the distance. Yeah. And Dylan's land is over that way, as well as the phone ping radius. So imagine what you could see. You know, if you're there at the time before Dylan went missing, it's vast, it's desolate, it's quiet, it's empty. It's like there's no life at all, no activity. And yet there's a lone individual out there working on a farm and living there alone. So it's kind of weird to take it in, in a way. As for access points, was there any on the mountain? Well, I said, um, not really, no. It looks a bit too steep to actually climb up to. If anyone's been there, feel free to leave a comment, but I can't see any proper pathways, can you? I mean, you got the one here, which goes up here. You see it winding in and out, and then it kind of reaches a dead end, doesn't it? You see? Dead end here. And then up this way, it's it's probably just too steep, so that probably explains why no one's got up there. Definitely not Jim either. Now, apologies about the dodgy camera angle. I'll do a distance thing. Let's just do it from the tip, okay? I keep. Why do I keep saying tip? I must have obsession, obsession with fucking tips. <laughs> no, actually, no, 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 no. Actually, no, I don't. That's weird. That. Um, where do I want to do the marker? Let's let's literally do it here, where the the mining is, and we just follow the line. Okay, as if you were driving down. Okay. Again, apologies if this video is a little bit long. Hopefully it's a bit more um, interesting visually compared to my last one. Okay, we're not. We're going off-road now. My God, we're going off-road, man. The gloves are off, as well as the fucking handbrake, because we're going to be rolling down this hill, man.
fast as light and speed down here like Muhammad Ali, I'm on top of the world, man. So that was a, an extract from Silver Heels. Got a bit carried away there, apologies. There we go. So, yes, I have taken a shortcut, but maybe if you drove off the edge of the mountain, that could happen by accident. You know, I think about the elevation as well. Oxygen levels, the cold traps, time of the season, time of the year. And does water trickle down from here, or has it got its own little rivers and springs elsewhere? It must do, because we saw it named on the other side of the mountain on Lucent then could that trickle down, could that water trickle down from the mountainous area and go into the wash nearby on Dylan's land? Is that possible? Okay. So on the spot, it's about two miles from the top of the mountainous area over the border to the abandoned barn, okay? And it's, let's just see... Bit of a shortcut, whoops. Oh, it didn't work then. And it's about, I'm gonna round it up, 3.16 miles, okay? Which isn't that bad, to be honest. But one thing you've always got to take in mind, whilst the distance could be a small amount, the time it actually takes to cover that distance can vary between flat ground and mountainous area, both in vehicle and on foot. It can take longer, you know. If I'll just show you a quick, well, no, I won't show you that. I'll tell you a quick comparison. So you can just observe the screen, take it all in visually, how it looks, the distances, make up your own theories and thoughts in your head right now if you wish to, okay? But I'll just briefly explain the whole distance situation and how it can affect how people perceive it in terms of the visual stats. So you've got a place like Jome Canyon in Nevada, okay, so on this on this border over, over this side. Jome Canyon, you do the M Cave hike route, the original, going through Jome Canyon, heading north over Wild Horse Pass, turning left going west, down Picture Canyon, eventually coming out, heading back the way you came, looping back to your vehicle, and that can take about 10, 11 hours. I can't remember the exact mileage from back then. It was about eight, nine miles or a bit longer than that. But regardless, it's one of those things where you look at the number and it's like, well, that's not that bad. That could be done. But because it being rocky, steep, uneven the ground, rough, tiring, hot, warm, humid, and all of that, whilst also looking out for the wildlife as well, mountain lions, and also sightseeing and looking and investigating for the M Cave, Kenny, remains, bones, clues. There's a lot of time taken up. Even when Jeff Clark was within the area and he went up one of the canyons nearby, can't remember the name of it. I don't know if there was an official name for it. I think he called it the fish, the fish hook canyon, the way it was shaped. Trying to retrace really Robin's steps when he came across the strange stone with the M symbol on it in in a Hebrew language. Very mysterious. We don't know where the actual location is, but Jeff Clark tried going there. And he said he underestimated it or so in terms of the timing, how he planned and mapped out how he was going to do things. He was going to go up one canyon, then he was going to go up the other, and then the third one if he's got time. But in the end, he could only really go up one properly and rush the second so much because it took longer than expected. You know, the actual mileage might have not been as bad, but it took time going up a steep canyon with loose rocks and rock fall falling on you than it is walking on a straight path or a field. So, you know, it can be deceiving, and you gotta take that in mind. And Just like the whole visual aspect, we're all tying it in together. We look at this on the screen and it's like, yeah, it looks fast. Um, the mountain area looks tall and steep, but when you're actually there, it's gonna be even worse, even like more steeper and bigger. 
So it's, all, it's always worth taking that in mind, especially if you're going out there hiking, exploring, investigating, just so you're aware and you know what you're dealing with. So I think with all that in mind, these are the different areas and the locations I wanted to map out that were nearby Jim's trailer in terms of potential activity before or after Dylan's disappearance, possible locations of where people might know of Jim or witness things in the past, such as the explosion of the trailer with the farms on both sides. But then the mine in the distance, the mountain border and the abandoned barn, which could have been used by Jim to store something or someone at a point in time, maybe even Chase visited. So let me know your thoughts about what you think of this. So yeah, kind of interesting. I know I said some people will be like, oh, we know the location already, but not everyone will know. You know, like how the whole grain shed situation about Dylan's Ford F-150 being at the grain shed. I thought that was the case. And so did others in the end, but it was actually at his place of living at the time. So it was like, oh, but if it's not talked about clearly in a video, in the title of one, you're not going to know because you know, you can't look at every single video and every single second of a channel. Not It's not always the case, not always practical. So it's worth taking into mind. Whereas when people come across this video, the title will be literal, will be clear, will stand out and boom, there you go. If you need the location, you type it in on the search and then it should come up. The only factor which would stop it from showing up immediately on screen would be simply views. If there's other videos which are more important, have got more views, they will dominate. They will stand out from mine. That's just how it works. If they use certain keywords in the description, hashtags or whatever, with the same wording as my title, that will uh, overproceed over, I forgot what you call it, basically be on top of mine, just how it works, okay? With the Kenny Veach case, because not as many people covered that, hardly any, if I did videos, my videos would show up most of the time. But then again, some people did say, uh, people were trying to criticise me saying, oh, you're not uploading any videos recently, so you're going down the search list. Oh, what are you going to do? I'm like, oh, what the fuck do I do? Oh, well, oh, well, never mind. I'll upload a video at some point, it'll show up. But it's because... Even then, even though I was the main one uploading all the videos on the case, there was other people still doing it, but I was uploading the most of it. You had these 10 month, one year, two year old videos back from 2016, 2017 and on, which were just doing the regurgitated story. But because it was a popular channel, big audience, big following, it dominated in views. So even when it wasn't relevant to what you might be typing in on a search engine, those are the videos that pop up first over the actual search specific term words of a video such as mine. There's not much you can do about it at the end of the day. It's just down to popularity. So that's just how it works, okay? Um, but I think the most important part to take from this video is that vehicle caught on camera because the whole timing of it and if it wasn't Jim's vehicle, then you could ask, who else is it? A visitor, a friend, Chase, um, Robert Aviles, maybe? Do they know something? You know, you start seeing certain contacts with one another and activity as well as being caught on camera. Maybe you can piece it together in some way. Let me know what you think about all of that and what do you think about the barn? I said, I'm going to try and reach out to Lance, whether it be now or later. I don't know when. I'll see when I can. Give him the coordinates, drop them off and just ask, have you been here or not? Yes, no. Is it worth checking out? And so on. And maybe it might even be worth just looking back. You know, the investigation has ended at Jim's trailer. Has anyone tried going back since just to see what it looks like? Yeah. OK, they said they haven't found anything. To some people, they could say, well, maybe they're saying that to make it seem like they've not made any progress, but they have, but they're keeping it secret because they can't release it yet. And they haven't told Candice either because she talks and, you know, releases it out to everyone when she's when she shouldn't. OK. But I just want to throw this point in very quickly. OK. So with the key fob, mainly the key fob. 
with Heavy D's video back then, a month ago or so, Candice said out in the interview that the key fob has been found. Shortly afterwards, in a Facebook post, she says, it hasn't been. And then, in most recent time, it has, but it was retracted because it shouldn't have been said public. People are gonna assume that that's what Candice was referring to originally and she let it slip. And then ever since, she's gone back on it to try and cover it up. And maybe police don't trust her, so they're not gonna give her any more information. You could say that, but could it be through a thing running in parallel without actually meaning it for the same reason? So when Candice said the key fob has been found along with the gun, and when she cleared it up afterwards, she said, oh, it was the grandparents that caused the confusion. Was that literally how it was meant? So Candice wasn't revealing it to the public about what the police have found. She wasn't leaking information purposely, on purpose. She was indirectly, in parallel, without intention, releasing similar information under the misinformation and influence of the grandparents who got it mixed up with a spare set. So it had nothing to do with leaking information with the police, but it followed the same outcome. Does that make sense? So if it was all through misunderstanding and she wasn't releasing anything, then she should be told certain stuff if she can be trusted. So it, it all depends how you look at it. It's just a small little detail. It's all down to the wording of it. And that's how I see it because of the way it was worded. Okay. So I don't think there's much else I can say. But that barn does look spooky. The mine could still be in use. That could rule that out. I said, if the mine is in use, then it's probably not going to be used by someone like Jim to store or dump something. And then maybe the mountainous area where there's that quarry or that crater might not be used or touched either. Depends if it's restricted land or not. But I said, we can clear things up along the way in the chat, in the comment section, and that can help. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this map analysis video. I'll see you in the next one when that ever when whenever that comes and yeah thanks for watching goodbye